so we, we got into a little bit about college. Um, I'm going to go back it up a little bit back into high school. Um, one question that I want to know, because we talked about you know your college breakout game against a and when you finally got the opportunity after the injuries. Was there a game in high school that you remember that was possibly your biggest game or your maybe your favorite memory? Uh, yeah, I've got plenty of those, man. Which one do you want to go with? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I all just right. Just no, my favorite my, uh, memory. How about that? My favorite memory, we played um, – north side it was our first 7a game um that greenwood has ever played um and we were a 5a team my my sophomore year my sophomore year my junior year we went up another level to 6a 7a we were like okay well you know we won state in 5a you know can we do it again in 6a 7a man it, it, it was no no it was my senior year that was right because we won two state championships in the 5a and then my last year we bumped up senior year that's what it was we played north side my senior year and uh, my first, it was my first 7A competition. And I was like, finally, like, they let this little 5A team play a bunch of bigger guys with yeah. a lot more talent. Like, I'm excited to see not necessarily what I would do, but, like, what the team would do. Man, we came out there, balls flaming, firing guns, man. We were throwing touchdowns. We, were, we, we ended up beating them, but, man, it was crazy just because everybody was so hype and – yeah. The crazy part about it was the the girl I was dating at the time was from Northside, and her dad was the vice principal. And he was like, "Good luck against my team. I can't wait to win and, and talk smack to you oh, after the dang, game." And I was okay. like, "I was like, okay, all right." So I had a little chip on my shoulder that game. I ended up, I think I ended up scoring like three or four touchdowns on him. It, it was a it was a bloodbath at the end, but I mean. It's, it was like a little in-state, in in-town rivalry because they were about 20 minutes up the road, and they all talked smack on us. But I mean, it was a good one. That was my favorite by far. That is awesome. That definitely gave you some extra fuel to the fire right there, talking that pregame smack. Heck, yeah. Heck, yeah. Um, the shift from high school to college, we, we talked a little bit about that. You know, you had to be patient your freshman and sophomore year. Um, you know, you were trying to get coach B, you're like, you, you, you were saying you can make a difference and like you want to be out there. How difficult was that shift from high school to, and from playing to having to wait? Um, you know, I, I tell this to a lot of kids um, that I talk to now, um, that I just kind of give them advice on, you know, the transition. Um, I, I, I view a shift as left to right. Um, like switching gears on a on a standard or okay. manual vehicle, you know, you, you you go from park to neutral to first gear. It's all left to right, and yeah. then maybe sometimes up and down. A transition, in my eyes, is always up. Um, a regression is is always down. And from high school to college, it's a transition. And what I say is, man, it's all where you put your mind. You know, you see freshmen basically balling out there let me let me just give an example real quick the clemson quarterback uh lawrence that dude dude he is a stud i don't know what the kid was fed when he was two but my gosh he's (laughs) a big old boy they definitely fed him right but the moral of the story is man you you have to have a chip on your shoulder and that's one thing that i had um and i was ready to play my freshman year you got to go in with the same mental you know, capability in college that you do, you know, your senior year of high school. But at the same time, you got to realize you're not the big dog on campus anymore. So put your head down and start grinding, young buck, or somebody's going to put you in your place. It's one of those kind of things. Like, and I had to do that my senior year of, of high school as well. I had to, I had to sit a couple of the freshmen down and say, hey, look, you know, this is our team. This is my team. You're going to respect this, and we're going to win a state championship. And after this, then it's your team. But for right now, you need to respect your, you know, your seniors, and you know that's how it went. My my same thing my senior year in in college. You know, after I I grew from being you know an underdog to one of the SEC's top players, um, I I had to just not necessarily sit down with these kids because you know they're in college now they're grown. I had to lead by example, um, and I think that's what was lacking um, a lot in the previous years that I was there. There was there was no leading by example, and so after the fact that I did that. Um, you know, we started winning games and I think it's all about just your mental, you know, mentality and just your attitude and and positivity and and always bringing the juice, man. That's, that's just part of it. 
you got to bring it every day, no matter what age, no matter what year, no matter what color, no matter what position, bro, you got to bring it uh, day in and day out. Whether you have practice or whether you're in school, you got to attack it. That is, that is very respectable and very true. And I just, that leading by example, instead of, you know, just sitting him down and saying, like leading by example, that's, that's something I respect a lot just because, you know, something I like see a lot and something I think a lot is like, it's not always what you say you're going to do, but what you're going to do or like what you actually do is what is actually going to like show yep. and leading by example, like what you said like that. That's awesome, man. I, th- I think that could, uh, that definitely helped change the way how it was from before. before. Um, yep. Do you have a favorite overall memory as a Razorback in your time there? Um, you know, there's a lot of good memories, um, that the Razorbacks and Arkansas has, has given me. Um, I get a little choked up about it because, you know, I miss it so much, but at the same time, you know, I don't, I don't live with any regrets or I don't look back on any bad times. I see everything as a good thing. Um, I say my biggest memory, my favorite memory was winning against Auburn um, in that fourth overtime game my junior year. Um, That was a statement game for the Razorbacks um, just to catch that last ball and and go up the sideline and dive into the end zone and spin like a little top, man. I I knew I knew the game. I knew the game wasn't over, but I knew that was going to be a memory that I had for a lifetime and the guys that I was there and sharing it with and the good Lord blessed me with that opportunity and I took full advantage of it, man. And I couldn't thank my coaches better enough to put me in that position. And just that, that feeling after the game and, and going out with the guys and, and enjoying the, the, the first 24 hours of that victory and knowing we had to get up the next day and, and go back to work. It's, it's, it's always better going into, you know, Sunday's workouts and Sunday's recovery, uh, session is just like a, knowing you have a dub it's like i got a dub last night against a top 24 25 ranked team like <laughs> how does that how, how them apples taste i mean it's one of those kind of things but that was one of my favorite memories there's plenty of them but man just the guys that i was around at that time and sharing those memories with man it was awesome that's what, getting the that victory feeling that that definitely makes the work you put in um, beforehand all the all the sweat, all the tears, you know, the blood, like all the practice moments, the workouts, it makes it all worth it in the end, doesn't it? It just makes you feel completely happy. And yeah. It makes, you, it makes you want to do more, right? Uh, of course. I mean, that's that's why you play this game. You know, it's not I, – I play it for a, a different purpose. I play it for my, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, he gave me the opportunity to, to play this game, the ability to, to move and, and catch and, and recognize coverages and – Honestly, like, I would think I would be doing myself and, and him just a, a disappointment, just be a disappointment or a disapproval of him, like, looking down on me from the heaven and just being like, you wasted opportunities. Like, I gave you all these you know, glorious things on earth. Like, who cares if you don't have money right now? Who cares if your parents are going through a divorce? Like, I'm showing you love by giving you an opportunity, a platform to just basically reach out and, and, and spread the word of God through football. And, you know, that's... That's one thing that, you know, the reason I play football, and you know, I can always do more, be more, uh, see more. And, and, and that's, you know, that's the moral of the story. You can always do more, but what are you going to do with what you have right now? You know, this is only going to set you up for something later in life. And, you know, you got you to use this you know, platform of success to springboard yourself into, you know, greater success. Kind of like what you're doing right now. You know, you're interviewing guys all over the place and it all starts with one. That's all that matters. And next thing you know, here in about five, ten years, you know, you're in college, you graduated, and you're on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that'd definitely be something else. It's crazy. No, I, it's crazy to me that, like, I the night I, like, sent you the first message on Instagram um, and the picture of the frame I have and, you know, the picture that you signed for me um, mm-hmm. that my dad got for me. Um, like, it's crazy because on that, that night, I sent you the message and then I saw you had someone post on your story and I looked at the story mm-hmm. and it was actually a picture of you. It was the same picture that I had that night it was like really? from a couple of hours earlier. And I was just like, that's, that's, uh, that's a pretty cool coincidence. And honestly, man, uh, you, you, you said you remembered me and like, um, you know, you said that if I ever need anything, just to let you know. And I was like, okay, 
I don't like I feel bad for asking, but like he could be the person that, you know, help me get everything started, right? Like the first yeah. time you were just yeah. one of the first guys and like to really help get everything off the ground or, and just help it get running. Um Yeah. And the first person was TQ over Skype, right? Um mm-hmm. but you're the second guy on it and, and I just you're still very early and like you're honestly one of the people that made me like want to push for this idea i had this idea but for the longest time but whenever i first talked i got in that little small conversation with you and that seriously helped push me to actually like starting this and trying to message athletes and talk to more people so you're one honestly you're one of the biggest like factors and one of the biggest like reasons i actually got this started like i i love that man that is awesome that's awesome i i one thing i want to tell you real quick man and i'm going through it right now um, there's going to be a lot of people that doubt you and say, no, there, there's going to be a lot of guys like, nah, I'm good. I, I appreciate your time. Or they're not even going to open your message. They're just going to delete it and say, oh, he's spam. Man, don't let that affect you, bro. Go get what you want. Go get your dream and don't let nobody tell you no. Okay. It's only you and you only, you've got your own back. Now you got me. I got your back. I'm the, I'm your credibility and, and anything you need, just like for future references, bro. I'm here for you because the drive that you have, whether it be in football or whether it be in sports or whether it be in broadcasting, whether it be in interviewing, bro, it don't matter what you do. Just bring the juice and own the do. Like you got to do it and you got to own it. And that's about, that's about just being yourself, man. People are going to love you. People are going to hate you. But you know what? What do you do to haters? You love them. You love them back. Thank you. So go so get it, bro. Much, man. Like, thank you so much for that. That's, that is awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. I really appreciate that and really appreciate this. Um, going back to the interview, you know, um, picking back up, after your senior year, um, you went undrafted and you signed with Miami, correct? Yes. And you were in the first year, were you in the practice on the practice squad for the first and second year? Because you, how long were you with uh, in the Miami organization? I was with Miami for a year and about nine months, year and eight months. Um, so the first year I was on practice squad the entire time uh, playing behind Jarvis Landry, which I learned a lot from um, just on the field, not the field. But the second year came rolling around and went through training camp, did really good things. Um, the staff was kind of going sideways and I kind of knew it and, and people were, you know, getting kind of mad. And I saw some things happening that, you know, you, you could easily find you know and and i at the at the end of the day they, they let me go um they were off the practice squad and they ended up not offering at all and i was just kind of like wow like i did everything for you my first year on practice squad didn't even get an opportunity to play and i felt like i was kicked to the curb i felt like you know they, they just threw me under the bus and no other team wanted me to you know wanted to pick me up everybody's kind of like mm, we don't have enough film on him we don't have enough film on him and i'm like have enough film like what do you mean like i got a lot of film i got a lot of college film i got a lot of tapes like my stats say everything you know i need it to say and i just i, I miami was a great system and coach gase was awesome i still talk to him this day he's a great man he just you know it's not his choice at ultimately at the end of the day man that that's crazy. They, they they think they didn't have enough film. I mean, you played, in my opinion, the greatest conference in college football, and in a lot of people's opinions, you played in the SEC. You went up against some of the toughest defenses that are ever going to be playing in Alabama. You got to go against LSU, yeah. and Auburn. Like you played against some top competition, and your numbers prove themselves. Like they are, they speak for themselves. So yeah, uh, it's kind of insane to hear. Um, did you have? And you said you had a workout with Tennessee after Miami, correct? Yep, I had a workout with Tennessee. Um, was the best one there, without no doubt. Um, and you know, I had some some of my boys were there too. And I told them, I said, "Hey, man, look, I know we're competing for this job right now during this workout, but I'm gonna let you know right now, you're gonna have to bring your A game, or I'm gonna take it from you." <laughs> <laughs> and they laughed, and we giggled. And you know, that's just that's just me, and that's why a lot of guys want to be around me because I I bring out the best in them, whether it's me saying some stuff, you know, that needs to get them fired up or me telling them that, hey, I'm going to beat you. And that fires them up more. But at the end of the day, there ain't no fighting, you know. It's, it's this is what it is. This is what we do. And I'm going to bring the best out of you because I, I only want you to be as successful as you can be. And don't hold yourself to a lower standard. Always commit yourself to something greater, nothing less. 
we went in there and I balled out, man. I, I tore everything up. I, I did great on the drills, ran every route clean, didn't slip, caught every ball, caught two hand, caught two one-handed balls that were like, oh my gosh, like that was like insane. Ended up sitting in the uh, film room with with their head coach Vrabel and talked to him for about forty-five minutes, man. And then he was like, you know, we appreciate everything you've given us. Uh, you know, I think you know at this point in time we don't need you, but later in the road we might. And I was like gum it like i did everything for this guy like i even sat down and talked to him for 45 minutes i said what more do you want <laughs> yeah but it was hard it was tough for me but you know what in the end you know i learned from it and grew from it and i know how to condone myself in a meeting and it, it was hard it was a hard long year because after that i didn't get a single uh workout and i was i was back home in arkansas living at my parents house with my fiance and it was a tough tough deal it was really tough on me as a, as a man, and you know, I grew from it though. And we're living in Arkansas now in Fayetteville, and so we got our own little house. So, you know, I definitely, definitely didn't regress. I definitely progressed and, and transitioned into something greater. Oh yeah, man. Um, whenever you like, you've gone through with the Miami Dolphins and the Cincinnati Titans, you know, you feel you've given your all to them, and you've you've worked your butt off at the end of the day, right? Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's one thing I, I definitely hold true to is, you know, being a grinder, going in there every day with the same mentality and just, just working, man. Yeah, and, and after you've given your all like that, like, what are, what is some of the ways that you can cope with it at the end or, like, what, after after you get that, that call or, you know, you get that message, it's just, at this moment, we can't use you or they whatever they say and they might say, after that, what do you, what is your response to that? My, my first response is, you know, I thank the Lord. I thank him. I say, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Um, my faith is in you. Give me guidance. Provide for my family. Provide for me uh, with your love and your abundance of, of joy and, and care and, and health. And I thank him for everything I, I have because, you know, that's one thing that a lot of guys don't do is, you know, are thankful for what they have. And then, you know, you realize everything's great but then when you don't have it i mean it kind of goes down the drain and you realize how much you miss it and how much you want it but you know in the time being i, I was i was just very thankful for just being out there and yeah you know, the second thought i had was what could i have done better what could i have done different to make them like me more a lot of the stuff the reasons that i would cut was stuff i couldn't control I, you know, I've been, I've tried to be a four, four guy my whole life, four, three guy my whole life. I, I, I've done multiple different training exercises. I've, I've stretched, I've done yoga, I've, <laughs> Pilates, I've done a lot. I'm not a really fast guy. I'm really quick though. Um, I, you know, I can't, I was born like this. This is, this is what I, this is how I grown up. This is, you know, I'm five, 11 and a half, 195 pounds. Like this is who I am. I'm not six foot four. I'm not going to try and take the top off. I've got football speed. A uh, football speed. I don't have track speed. A lot of guys in the NFL, you know, coaches stuff, they like track speed for some reason. I don't know why, but you know, you don't play football on a track, you play football on grass. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's some stuff I couldn't control, you know. You're not you're not big enough, you're not thick enough. Well, I'm, your body doesn't look right. Well, I try like I'm not I'm saying I'm giving you my everything, but yeah. just a lot of those things that I wish I could, you know, the uncontrollables that I wish I could control. And then you know, the third thought I had is just, you know, go back to your family and 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 regroup and don't take a day off. You, know, you can never take a day off because the day you take a day off is the yeah, you know, it'll probably be your last day to to really grow. And somebody else is going to take your position, take your job. This this life in football it only lasts so long. So every every opportunity you get, just like I said many more times. An opportunity is could could change your life in one day, and it's weird. I've seen it happen to many guys. I've I've seen it happen to myself. You you just got to take take each day with a grain of salt. 